Hello grade 11 math class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson two today, frequency tables, histograms and frequency plots. It's just too big for me to write here. Um, so the title is a blank screen. Uh, we have our definitions up at the top, as you can see, frequency distribution, histogram and frequency polygon. Uh, these are essentially different types of graphs that we're going to look at. So I'm not going to read these definitions. You can read them. They're full of you know, larger terms. And if you have specific questions, please let me know. But we are going to like look at these as we go down. If you look at the bottom of your page, or the whole second half, we have a table, um, a table of information, table of data, um, just like our salaries in the last lesson. Maybe not the most useful thing to look at. So how are we going to make that into something that we can actually read. Um, that's what today is all about. So, um, in the second half of the 20th century, there have been nine notable floods and we have categorized four of them as severe. 1950, 79, 96, and 97. The 1997 flood is known as the flood of the century. The following data represents the flow rates of the Red River uh, for 50 years over all of these floods. Uh, as reported at the Redwood Bridge in Winnipeg. So you can see here in our table um, that we have the year and the flow rate. So 1950, 3,058, it's a little bit of a different color, lighter on your sheet. Um, and then we have all of these years, regular, some that are quite low, 500, 300, 400, 500, some that are quite high, 2,500 again, but 79, we have 3,000, 1996, we have 3,000. All the way over in 1997, we have 4,587, which is way higher than any of these. Now, if they were not color coordinated, if they were not red, it would be almost impossible for you to pick out quickly the years that have a large flood. So this is all about showing data, again, like our line and dot plots. This is showing data in a way that is easy to read, easy to look at and pick out trends. So let's go down, yes, to your next page. So. If we have A here, determine the water flow rate that is associated with serious flooding. So this right here um, is a frequency table. We have the rates and we have the frequencies. Now with rates, you could have a continuous, any rate, right? It could be 150, it could be 151, it could be 152. So we often with these have to put them into categories. So you see here, uh, we have a range, 150 to 600 flow rate. And there were 11 of those throughout those 50 years. Uh, we have 600 to 1050, 1050 to 1500, 1500 to 1950. And then the values of how many uh, floods or flow rates were in that range. You can see that the range is always the same. Uh, the range or the, the size of the interval is 450 meters cubed per second because that's our unit. Uh, we cannot have like a range uh, for the first one of 1,000 and then the second one of 500 and the next one 250. That would be skewing the data or not fair. Um, so this is a frequency table. And then we have a histogram on the side here. Um, we have this, so it is putting this information into a bar graph form. So between 150 and 600, we have a bar graph that goes up to 11. Uh, we have 12 between 1500 and 1900. There's a huge space. There were none between 3000 and 4200, but there was one here and there's three here. So it told us that there were four major floods. So if we can pick out the line above which there are four tallies, or four floods of, uh, with a flow rate higher than that, um, that would be classified as a major flood, a severe flood. So we're looking at this data. So if uh, we have one that is over 4,200, if we go down all the way down to 2850, uh, we have three in that range. So one, two, three, plus the one that's way out here gives us four. So it looks like anything that's over 2850 for a flow rate is a severe flood. So um, any value over 2,850 meters cubed per second is a severe flood in Manitoba. Severe flood in Manitoba. 
and it told us that there were four floods that were severe, and I found four tallies that go above that. If we continue down, we're going to, uh, oh, I took out those graphs, that's okay. So we're gonna identify similarities and differences between these types uh, of graphs. Um, some similarities that we see between these two graphs is that they have to divide it into intervals. The frequency table and the histogram both have intervals, so B. Um, similarities is that they have intervals. We need to, this could also be called grouping data. or binning data. Essentially, you take a look at a piece of data and you put it into a specific bin. Okay, it's between these two, it goes here. This piece of data is between these two numbers, it goes here, that's binning data. So um, there are similarities there. We have to group them so that we can um, show the number that are between those values. Um, some differences, we have a table versus a graph. So differences, we have a table versus a graph. Um, and there is something very um, particular in how you draw these graphs. So another way to draw a histogram would be to um, draw our dots at our specific point. So if we had 11 for our first year, um, it was a few less the second, something like that. Instead of drawing a bar graph, you can draw a line that connects these. So um, when you're making these lines, these points have to be at the midpoint of the interval. So one difference is that with this type, there's going to be um, the midpoint of the interval is going to be found. Let's continue. So um, this question has to do with the intervals. If the intervals were 200 instead of 450, so essentially if the intervals were smaller, would it be easier to see if the flood is severe or not? Um, so we would essentially have more bars, but they would not go as high because there would not be as many within each interval. Um, and if we think about how that would spread out the graph, I don't know if that would make it easier to pick out a severe flood, as it was fairly straightforward with these graphs because you could just see you know, this many were over this value, and it would be very similar if you made the intervals of 200. So answer for C would be no, it would, um, it would not be a benefit. And it could possibly make the data harder to work with if you have more bins or more intervals to work with. Could actually make it more difficult. So our interval choices actually matter a lot in how uh, easy it is to work with the data. Um, large ranges are okay in flood situations to send out warnings. Okay, let's look at another example Let's look at earthquakes this time. So I'm cutting off the question or the example thing here so I can see this, okay? All right, so we have data here about earthquakes. Each of these histograms is a year. So this purple one is 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, and 2009. So it is counting the number of earthquakes that is in each range uh, each year. So in 2005, between three and four on the Richter scale, there were 20, which feels like a lot of earthquakes. Uh, comparatively, if you look at, let's say 2007, there were only 12 between three and four, but a significant number more between two and three. 
Uh, if you were just given a list of data, it would be very, very difficult to pick out these trends and see which one had the most from three to four, uh, or which one had the least severe or the most severe. So these histograms or these graphs give us a very easy way to visualize that. The magnitude of an earthquake is a, is a measure using the Richter scale. So here are the histograms for five years. Which of these years could have had the uh, which of these years would have the most uh, damage from earthquakes? So there's a couple ways we could look at it. Just the most earthquakes, or maybe the most severe earthquakes. Uh, you can see here uh, that if you have one that's more than seven, it's going to have widespread destruction, um, and it goes down from there. So uh, partial collapse of ordinary buildings seems like pretty severe. Um, five to five point nine. Um, you might have damage to weak buildings. Is that considered severe? So we have to then um, explain our reasoning in what we think is severe and not severe. Let's get to some questions um, and check these out. So, oh, we don't have any questions. Let's see. The questions that I have here, I'll just read them. So we're going to compare the data. And I guess what we're going to do is we are going to um, find out which has the most damage. Oh, we're going to go with this question right over here. Which of these years could have had the most damage from earthquakes? That's what we're doing. Okay, so you can just write this below. Uh, let's start off by finding out the number of earthquakes that had uh, minor damage. We just essentially counting up um, the number of earthquakes that had some damage in it. And I think that we categorize this as from four to five, so this would be minor damage. So anything from four to five is considered a minor damage earthquake. Um, so let's make a little table. We have our year, we have the number or the frequency you could put here. And again, this is from four to five, okay? So if we have 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, and 2009, those are the years, oh, a little hard to see. How many did we have between four and five? Well, in 2005, it looks like we had five. In 2006, it looks like we had eight. In 2007, we had nine. In 2008, we had a whole ton. 2008, oh my goodness, had no none between zero and two, but it had a whole bunch. It had 16 between four and five. In 2009, was okay. Looks like it had seven. So laying it out like this, we can see, okay, 2008 had the most earthquakes that had minor damage. 2008 had the most quakes with minor damage. We could stop there and just say 2008 was a bad year, but let's check out earthquakes that had major damage and find out what year uh, was the worst for major damage. So we're going to um, categorize major damage in a little bit of a different way. So um, I'm going to glance at my data and see that 2008 and 2009 both had uh, quite a few earthquakes that are uh, above, the, uh, above what we would expect, I guess you could say. So we're going to make a data comparing those two and you could um, do you know add another one in as well I'm just gonna focus on these two I'm gonna focus on the number of earthquakes between uh, five and six number of earthquakes between six and seven and then seven and eight or higher I guess seven to max I will put there uh, in 2008 there were five earthquakes between five and six which is quite a few in 2009 there were three in 2008 there were four between six and seven which is quite a lot and there was one between um, six and seven and then our scales go they don't go to seven okay so this is actually a stupid interval for me to put in here so we can just get rid of that one okay it's okay to put something down and just get rid of it if it doesn't make sense to put in there uh, checking this out, it looks like 2008 had nine total severe earthquakes. So again, 2008 was the worst compared to only four for 2009. So 2008 
had the most severe earthquakes and probably the most damage overall. Um, most minor and major damage. So if you have any questions about analyzing these, um, please let me know. I'm going to, if you're in, the, in your assignment, you're going to create um, these graphs as well, as well. So you're going to take data and put it into different intervals and then label how many pieces of data are in that interval by making a bar graph like this. If you have questions, again, please let me know. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. And yeah, I will see you soon because you have practice questions to do. Thank you.